this morning. We are hiring. That is the message from Nadine Woodward inviting laid off officers to work for the Spokane Police Department. Now, Mayor Woodward says the city is looking at increasing the diversity of the department, but some local leaders are worried about the lack of community conversation about who exactly Spokane wants to attract. And you have the, you know, the uh, preeminent Eastern Washington uh, advocates for communities of color, and you're not talking to us about what you're going to do. It's like, yeah, that might be kind of problematic. Also this morning, the Spokane County Health Officer says recent COVID data is encouraging, but says now is not the time to relax. He says the best way to control the pandemic is to listen to the data. And this morning, we do just that, listening to the latest local trends by the numbers. Up with Crim begins now. Yeah, we hear you, dude. It is definitely time for the weekend. Take a look at this massive bison who was growling and stopping traffic in Yellowstone this week. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I apologize. The Idaho mom who filmed this video was with her kids and snagged the video when they passed him by. Clearly, he had a lot to say. Um, yeah, Jen, uh, pretty amazing stuff here. I would say, <laughs> I love it. I love this guy. Yeah, I have the same reaction when I'm stuck in traffic as well. Right. That's part of the reason I moved away from Seattle back here to the uh, eastern Washington, so I can relate. I, I can't imagine what it, what it would be like if maybe he stopped and just growled at someone directly. You'd be like, I, I, I don't know what to do. You'd be frozen, I think. Yeah, good thing those people were inside their cars. Yes. I don't think I'd want to be outside dealing with that. So, uh, funny video. I'm glad to see people left him alone. Thank but you, yeah, exactly. moseying on by. <laughs> yeah, they're in his territory, so it makes sense. Now, All right, 731 now, 52 degrees. We do want to take a live look outside here on our Friday morning. As Joshua mentioned, yeah, we've made it to Friday, the end of the work week. And boy, weather is going to warm up as we head into the weekend. So, for more on that, we want to check in with Evan Narani. Good morning and a happy Friday to everyone joining us from home this morning. It's going to be a dry one out there. Another beautiful Friday ahead. Very summer like weather on the way. And uh, as opposed to the 70s, we will probably break into that 80 degree territory this afternoon, but a lot of warmth is coming beyond that. We're Saturday and Sunday. We're moving toward 90s and triple digits. So take a look at the next several hours as we go through your Friday. We're going to see those temperatures warm up to the low 80s. Likely Spokane will make it to about 83 degrees this afternoon. Mostly sunny conditions throughout the day. Let's see if we can get those graphics up there for you uh, where we got those temperatures just slowly warming up. There we go. And uh, light southwesterly winds joining us for most of the afternoon. Uh, warming up to 91 for Saturday, 99 for Sunday. So it's going to just get warmer and warmer going into uh, the rest of your weekend. Uh, Sunday is going to be one of those warmer days. Sunday and Monday, both days to keep an eye on as we are possibly breaking into triple digits. But partly cloudy skies could stop that 99 degree high from coming on Sunday, depending on how thick those clouds are. Now take a look at what we have as far as as watches and warnings go. We do have an excessive heat watch that will take effect from Sunday in the morning through Tuesday evening. That means for Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, dangerously hot conditions are possible for everywhere highlighted in red on your screen. Does not include much of North Idaho, but includes plenty of Washington. So uh, expect the heat to really pick up into the later portion of the weekend and into early next week. By the later portion of next week, we'll start to see a progressive cool down from there. So in just a bit, we'll take a look at that extended forecast and talk about uh, when we see the warm up really occur. How we see it happen and about that cool down that we're I think anxiously awaiting uh, after triple digits next week. All right, Evan, thank you so much. 733 now. Well, today is the last day for small business owners in Spokane County to apply for a COVID-19 relief grant. Now, the original deadline was on Monday, but it's now extended through 5 p.m. today. Business owners can receive up to $10,000 through the Greater Spokane Incorporated Nonprofit Program. Eligible businesses can use that money for payroll, utilities, and rent, and also personal protective equipment. Now, for more information on that application process and the eligibility, you can text the word APPLY to 509-448-2000. The grant money, the grant money rather, comes from $10 million granted to Spokane County as part of the CARES Act. Well, happening today, federal leaders are expected to approve a plan to kill hundreds of sea lions in the Columbia River. Now, it is set to take place across the next five years. Now, it stems from a 2018 change to federal law where leaders say you can kill sea lions to protect salmon. 
Now, according to Anchorage Daily News, up to 840 sea lions could be killed within a nearly 200-mile stretch of the river. Kill operations could begin as soon as this fall. Joshua. Thank you, Jen. 735 now. Positive trends do continue this morning out of Spokane County as we take the latest look at COVID-19 data by the number. So I've been tracking these cases for months from the Spokane Regional Health District. And as we head into the weekend, I want to look at some of these trends that we are seeing today. Now, just yesterday, if we look at the latest numbers out of health, the uh, health district, 56 new cases were reported of coronavirus in Spokane County. This marks the lowest, by the way, five day total we've seen since the very last week of June. Definitely a positive trend there. Now I'm going to add the 14 day moving average on top and we can see another positive move. The curve is dropping a little bit. This is the longest plateau the, or drop that we've seen since May. And that's back when the full stay home order was in place across all of Washington. Now I know what you're thinking. It's easy to look at this data. See the changes that we've made are starting to work. See the case numbers are improving and feel that urge to want to relax. But there was a conversation that happened this week with our own Whitney Ward, along with County Health Officer Dr. Bob Lutz, that points out we need to control this pandemic to get our lives back in order, which Dr. Lutz says means we listen to the data and we follow the trends. Now, so even though these case numbers are leveling out, we do need to keep in mind hospitalizations and deaths as well. The health district reports that 41 people right now are hospitalized. Now we can compare that to 83 hospitalizations last Friday. It's been cut in half over the past week, but we can also see that we're only a few weeks away from our highest peak hospitalizations that we've seen in the county. And since Washington's mask mandate was enacted back on June 26th, yeah, there were two days where we saw no hospitalizations. But after that, look at this. Every day we have seen new hospitalizations. I also want to look at reported deaths in the county linked to the coronavirus. Back in late July into early August, we saw the highest rate of deaths that we have seen so far. Just yesterday, the county confirmed a woman in her 70s has died from the virus, marking the 92nd COVID-linked death in the county. So yes, I know some trends are improving, but we do need to we do need to still be reminded that we're the reality is people are still getting sick and people are still dying and preventing as many unnecessary deaths as possible continues to be the health district's top priority. Dana Marie. As we can see, sorry, Dana Marie having a little bit of technical mic issues there. This is a message to all artists. If you're looking to lend your artistic flair to the new Sportsplex, the vision for the plan is a large hanging overhead piece for the lobby, which would be large enough to be seen through the windows outside of the new building. Spoken Arts crews are also asking for an outdoor piece as well. They wanted to have some kind of interactive element. Part of what is so incredible about the vision for the Sportsplex is how many visitors will be coming to Spokane. Just looking at it, you can imagine the range of how cool it will be to see some large, colorful piece that's designed by a local artist. Now, the large overhead piece is budgeted for $100,000. The outdoor piece budgeted for $50,000. All artists are allowed to apply, but Spokane artists say preference will be given to the Inland Northwest artists themselves. The deadline for the project was going to be today, but it's now been extended through August 25th, so that's about a week and a half away, and finalists will be announced by mid-September. For information on how to apply, you can check out crim.com, and the Sportsplex is set to be finished by this time next year. Great idea, uh, Jen. I think it's a great idea to be able to feature local artists who want to lend their sort of flair to the Sportsplex. Great way to get some, some eyes on their work. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so excited to see what comes out of this. The first thing that popped into my mind was Dale Chihuly. You know, the beautiful glass artwork that he has, uh, you know, that you can see in Seattle and other places. But uh, I love that they're featuring local artists, and I'm really curious to see what they come up with.
Well, with that plan for it to be done, hopefully by this time next year, we could be seeing it pretty soon, Jen. So we'll keep our eyes on that situation. Of course, we'll be following it very closely as it develops. Still to come this morning, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward is making a plea asking laid off officers to apply to the Spokane Police Department. But NAACP leaders say more conversation is needed to help diversify our police force. I mean, just bottom line is we have not been consulted in this in any way, shape or form as an organization. So it's all